So at some point I decided it would be best to weld the freewheel mechanism. So this is the viscous coupler right here. It is made by GKN, so it should be really good stuff. And then this is the freewheel mechanism right here. And basically what this does is it stops the rear from transferring torque to the front on like hard D-cell. So this breaks really, really easily. Like this breaks with the littlest amount of torque. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off this little dust shield right here. Just cut a little slit here. And big, big thanks to my friend Rick, who uh, he has a really cool 850 all wheel drive that he dirt races. And he said he breaks these free oil mechanisms all the time on the dirt. So if he's breaking them on the dirt, they're gonna, definitely gonna be breaking on the street. So we're gonna cut a little slit right here, pry this off, peel it off like a ring. And then basically underneath that is the area that we need to get welded. And that will basically lock the free will mechanism to the viscous coupler so that um, it won't fail anymore internally. And then we'll also probably drill a little hole. There's oil in there that we're gonna drill to drain the oil out. So I had a little paint, I had it all put together, but I mean, there's no reason not to do this because I know it's gonna break. And do I really care how much it takes to break? Not really, because it's gonna break and it's probably gonna break at pretty low power. In, in the lower gears. So let's just do it now and not have to worry about it and see what the viscous coupler can actually do. I don't really think the free wheel mechanism is that necessary. I mean, Volvo says, you know, it's for better brake stability when braking, but it's probably for if like the front hits a patch of ice and the rear, so the rear can't send a ton of torque. Like the front hits a patch of ice on D cell and there was no free wheel mechanism, then the rear would send a ton of torque to the front and spin the front wheels and maybe cause traction in the front and cause an issue with steering. I don't really think it's gonna matter on drive pavement if you have this or don't have it because there's plenty of cars that don't have free wheel mechanism and just have a viscous coupler. So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna take it to my welder and have him put a big goop all around it. I'm probably not gonna weld this myself because I want it done right. And, I'm not the best welder, I still need some more practice. A little slit here and down the side, and I'm just gonna pry it apart with the screwdriver and pull this off. Removed. You can see it just pries up, and here you can see there's a little seal in there that seals up the free wheel mechanism. Basically, what you do is you wanna weld all this metal to this metal right here. So I'm gonna get all that cleaned up, brake cleaned, and take it off to get welded. It's also a good idea to drill a hole in the free wheel mechanism to drain out the oil. You can see the oil coming out. I drilled a hole right here with a masonry bit. It's quite deep, but once it's out, you can see, uh, shake it, you can see all the oil coming out. So you want to get that oil out so that when you weld this and it melts the seal, that you don't have oil leaking everywhere when it's spinning around. Again, thanks Rick for the tip. So I ended up getting the free wheel mechanism all welded up. He did three passes with the TIG welder, came out perfect. I didn't realize how good he was going to seal this. So I probably didn't really need to drill a hole here and drain the oil, but I mean, it is what it is. I'm basically just gonna, you know, clean this all, brake clean, make sure all the oil's out of it. I guess it'll be a little less, uh, you know, rotating mass. But um, after that, I'm, I'm gonna take this to my local machine shop and then I, I'm gonna have them balance it because, I mean, it's very consistent, his bead, but I'd rather get this balanced if we're gonna be doing, you know, high speed pulls because why not? So I'm gonna get that balance and um, yeah, pretty happy with how this came out. And we just got to put this back together after we get it balanced. Grab the torque tube real quick. I also wanna talk about the torque tube a little bit. This is called the torque tube, by the way. At least that's what Volvo calls it. And I did a couple things to this. Well, really only two things. I replaced the bearing in here. Uh, OEM Volvo bearing, it's just an SKF bearing. There's actually two different sizes because there's two different revisions of this uh, system. Well, there's actually three technically. There's the pre-98, which is completely a little bit different. And there is the uh, late 98 to 00, which is this. Um, and there's also the 01 plus which is used in some of the early P2s that still use the viscous coupler. So I replaced that bearing. I also replaced this bushing. So we are all good to go in the torque tube department. We just need to get this uh, balanced and we can throw this back together, torque it up to, I think it's 105 pound feet, pretty easy. And then we can also bolt this up to the rear diff, which I'm gonna show next. 
So I already did a video on the whole assembly of the rear diff. I finalized it. I put the rear cover on, torqued all the caps, got everything finalized and um, got this nut torqued. I was just waiting on a new nut, a new seal and new side seals. And I threw in the axles. I also finished up these axles. I briefly talked about them in the previous video. So, I mean, this thing is looking awesome. Little preview. We are waiting on a couple more things for the hub. Put the new bearings in, put the new snap ring in. I am just waiting on the new bushings for here and then we can press everything back together. And we can put that on and we can put this whole subframe together as soon as we have those bushings because at this point I have everything um, to put this back together. And I also got to torque these, I bought new bolts to torque these CVs to my billet 4340 companion flanges that I designed. And I mean, uh, it's looking so cool so far. This thing's gonna look so awesome all put together. See, we got my custom bushings. They're nice and solid. I think those, and you can see this little lip stops it from moving axially too much. So we're getting there. Sometimes I look at this and I think to myself, am I building a rear wheel drive Volvo or an all wheel drive Volvo? Because this is just so overkill for all wheel drive, but that's what we want. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Again, I know it's so much building lately, and we all want to get to the fun part of driving and tuning the car and testing everything, but we just got to keep pushing through and, and finishing this up because, I mean, I'm starting to get a little tired, but, I mean, I'm really close. And when I make progress like this and I get to see things like this, it, it keeps me going. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to have... Hopefully a lot more stuff coming out soon.